name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brethren in Christ, laudetur Jesus Christus. In this is Timothy Flanders at the Meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome to another edition of your Monday Morning Man Show, Our Lady of Victory Press, with Fowler, Paleocrat, and the traditional Thomist. Gentlemen, happy feast of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. Happy feast to you. Is it uh, Alacoque? I'm not sure, actually. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, I thought the Q-U-E was always a, a hard C in French. That's like what Quebec. I've heard. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if it's Alacoque. Frenchman, if you're, if you're listening, correct us. Uh, so it is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. We've got... Um, Here's our liturgies of the home calendar. Uh, today, St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, or Alacoque, whatever. St. Luke on Tuesday, which is also my anniversary. So say hell, Mary, hey. for us. Celebrating eight happy years. Uh, many blessings. Uh, this depiction uh, from Liturgy of the Home also has the traditional symbol of St. Luke, which is the ox coming from the prophet Ezekiel, who has the vision of the four uh, beasts, and which which uh, is a typology of the four evangelists. And it also has the traditional uh, ascribing of the first icon of Our Lady to St. Luke. This was an icon that was, um, if let's see, is it is it the original Guadalupe? I think it is. Uh, it's the one that was buried in Spain, traditionally understood, and then uh, recovered as a part of the Reconquista. Um, and then uh, later on, we have St. Peter Alicantara, St. John Cantius, and of course, Our Lady on Saturday. Looking forward to the, the major feast of Christ the King later this month, uh, the traditional feast against Reformation Sunday on the last Sunday <laughs> of October. Yes. Beautifully depicted, as always, by LittersofTheHome.com. If you want to get this calendar, it's at LittersofTheHome.com. They also came up with a, a yearly planner that I'm I'm getting as well. We'll see about that. But it's a fantastic resource to catechize your children. Uh, Fowler, I want to know, how how is your how's your school year going? You're like three months into it now. How's everything going? Yeah, we're almost three months in. So we started mid-August so in September mid-October we've got I guess two months of, of class down uh, it's going really well I was I'll be honest I was a little nervous coming in having taught juniors and seniors at one school for three years and then they asked me so at, at this academy that I teach at now it's grade six to twelve and they said well we need you to come in at eighth grade because that's church history and I said oh that's convenient that's kind of my thing and they're like great so eighth graders, 13, 14 years old, but the boys are, uh, they're awesome. And, you know, you can, whatever random discipline issues you can expect out of a 13 year old boy, <laughs> they're good natured. <laughs> they can't keep their hands off each other. I'm like, stop touching him. But no, in, in all seriousness, it's going really well. Um, I wake up like I'm ready for work because right after this, I am extremely blessed to walk out the door and then, you know, here we go. Um, the school is, in my estimation, a cut above in many ways. Um, we do Catholic prayers in the morning rather than, you know, I know most um, schools that are Catholic in name only might, might eat, eke out like a, a deist prayer or something to the... Speak in tongues. To, yeah. With a, <laughs> yeah, you know, something. No offend anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Start your day. Yeah. <laughs> the... Uh, at, at other schools that I'm aware of, we'll just put it that way. Um, they're, you know, references to the divine, the creator, are very vague. And we always have Marian prayers in the morning and afternoon. Um, every class begins with prayer, we have mass once a month on first Friday. Um, I mean, we're, we're praying constantly for the canonization of our namesake, Father William Joseph Chaminade, uh, whose feast day is coming up. I, I might do a little historical sketch of, of blessed Chaminade in the future, but 
all things to say that it's going really, really well, and I couldn't be more pleased with uh, this this new uh, employment. Fantastic. So uh, reminds me the what we have here our domestic church group. Shout out to our ladies at Meaning of Catholic, mm -hmm. um, who they run both the domestic church group called Mary Mother of or Mary Queen of the Home. Uh, that's the domestic church group on Telegram co-ed. There's also a ladies only group, too. But uh, the ladies put together these resources. If you go to meaningofcatholic.com slash resources and you go to domestic church and then there's homeschooling resources. And this also serves basically as a checklist for um, the how do you get a good school? Now, not uh, there's not a lot of good Catholic schools out there. So if you happen to be in uh, an area with an awesome school, you can use this as a checklist um, because these are all the different resources put together. These are all the church teachings up front about the Catholic duty of parents to form their children. And here's a conversation with the ladies that we had, all sorts of different methods for forming your children. Um, but you can check this off the list that in the, so it's the, the Chaminade school follower is in St. Louis. Is that correct? There, there is one in St. Louis. There's another one, very, very similar name in Los Angeles. Uh, so if you're looking for the one, well, it look at them both. If you're in L.A. or the Midwest, they're, they're both good. Okay, sweet. So we've got two schools in mm -hmm. uh, one in St. Louis, one in L.A. So yeah. if you're, and, is I don't that know the how one that Chris both. Plants, Chris Plants is at a school in L.A. Is that the one that Chris Plants is at? Do you know? I I have no idea. Oh, okay. Chris no Plants, is but they're both called LA. Chaminade. Okay. They're both called Chaminade College Preparatory School. Okay, sweet. Awesome. As far as I know, so the only distinction would be on the bottom of the crest. Does it say St. Louis or Anaheim or wherever? Okay, sweet. Paleocrat, how's your school experience going? It's going awesome. It's going better than this microphone, which the cord is apparently really hot. I don't know what that's all about. But um, no, the, the school's going awesome, man. The kids had their um, they had their fall social, which was really cool. They do this kind of it's like line dancing, uh, kind of more traditional folk style dancing, more communal, right, as a group. And they run around this cool farm and then they have a, a hay ride that's totally awesome. So that's been a lot of fun. And of course, the kids are just rocking out, you know, amazing stuff. I shared just a couple weeks ago uh, their poetry. They, they every year they have a poetry recitation and you actually. Yeah, I saw you. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was uh, it was awesome, man. The kids are just great and they're all really good. You know, it's it's cool just to be able to go somewhere where you're hearing kids recite poetry and they don't stop reciting it for like five minutes straight. So they're, I mean, they're, they're memorizing enormous numbers of lines. <laughs> I said, I don't know how they do it, but it's, it's a remarkable thing to see. And, uh, and just to know that every single day they wake up and, and they go to mass. Actually, I'll say this. It was somebody, you know, a lot of the people that, that watch meaning of Catholic and a lot of the people that tune in uh, and read stuff, even at the site and go to the uh, telegram channel are homeschooling. Um, and a lot of them kind of suppose that I am like right out of the gate. It's just an assumption like, oh yeah, you're homeschooling. And I'm like, no, <laughs> said, I'm, no, I'm not. And they say, well, why not? And I show them, I say, well, if I didn't have this and I share a video of sacred heart and they're, they're always blown away by it. And, and they're always right to say, you're so fortunate to have that. And I say, I know, because we really are extremely fortunate to have a uh, sacred heart Academy here in Grand Rapids. It's an amazing school. And the kids are, they excel at it. And to have it so Christocentric, right? Starting every day with mass. And like Jake's school, to have Catholic prayers throughout the entire day. They begin the day, midpoints of the day, all throughout the day, Catholic prayers. And so uh, even having the priest regularly come in, talk to them in their various classes. Uh, some of the guest speakers that come in are really awesome. They even had Joseph Pierce, what I think last year, Kind of upset me. I didn't know <laughs> he was going to be there. I was like, you should have told me, you know, but they, they have, uh, it's just an amazing place. And so we're really fortunate to have that. Fantastic. So we got three good Catholic schools on the radar, St. Louis, LA and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, you can contact us if you want to get connected with the, we have in our guild community, we have a number of different 
communities for the Catholic immigration, the great Catholic immigration that goes on. So if you need to move to a different diocese because your diocese does not have Catholic churches, unfortunately, or, you know, what have you, things like that, not schools or whatever you need, things like that, that need that uh, are necessitating that we have a list of communities that we've built that people have been moving to different communities, some of them because of schools or other reasons. Um, so before we get into our topic, Cavazos, you're in school. How's your school doing or what are you studying or what's new with your channel? Yeah, I'm glad you phrased it that way because I was like, look, I have no kids. I have no no concern, at least in this matter yet. Um, but my school is going really well, actually. Um, one thing as I was kind of finishing up like the So my degree, right, it's a, it's joint bachelor's and master's program. Um, but, you know, as I've been finishing up my bachelor's, I've actually decided to go ahead and just sneak in, even though it's going to like cost me maybe an extra year or so bit of work. Um, to sneak in, going ahead and finishing up doing a double major, right, and making my second major in uh, uh, just history, because I love history. Originally, when I was going to school a long time ago, I was actually going for U.S. history, but I went, and this is I made a mistake, so this is applicable, I guess, maybe to the viewers. I went to a secular school, right? This was the mistake, and when I went, I wasn't Catholic at the time, uh, and I was actually fresh out of the homeschool world, just kind of like the conservative Bible believing homeschool world. So going to a um, secular college campus and my first professor right out of the gate was a lesbian. Second professor was a Unitarian minister. Uh, literally, it was just stacking up throughout that that first day. I was thinking, what the heck's going on? Um, but I ended up actually starting to hate the subject of history because they um they just made it so political, right? They would go into history and they would spend like 45 minutes um, talking about either current event politics. This was back in 2016, so during that tumultuous election. Um, and then the rest of the time would just be spent, you know, bashing the United States for all of its sins in some form or fashion. And not to say we're perfect, but also not to say that, you know, we're Adolf Hitler 2.0 in the 1700s. Um, <laughs> the great Satan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, and so it was pretty rough, but actually getting to go to a Catholic school, right, being at Holy Apostles, uh, taking all their Western, um, you know, civilizations courses and things like that has just been so much fun getting to go into. And uh, that's actually transferred a bit onto the channel because the stuff that I'm working on now, I've taken kind of a two-week hiatus as I've been kind of just stepping back and saying, okay, what massive series am I wanting to work on? What what do I want the traditional Thomas to be about? And uh, the big series that we're going to be going over is two, actually. Uh, we're going to be continuing our series over the Summa Theologiae, our kind of expository series. But then we're going to be going into the Sacra Theologiae Summa, which is that great eight-volume dogmatic manual from the 1950s, um, which is cool because... Uh, the reason I wanted to do that particular series is that with these manuals, you know, you see the theological belief proposed by the church. You see, at least in these manuals, the scriptural proofs, the patristic proofs, uh, a lot of the philosophical proofs, and then you see the magisterial proofs. But then what's cool about these manuals is that it gives you all of the proper theological notes just very clearly spelled out, right? One of the things that I like about this show and this community is that stressing that the theological notes and emphasizing on Catholics understanding that. And the good thing about this is it's super easy to read. So we'll be doing that. And then we're gonna be doing a, actually a Catholic moral theology series where we're gonna be going over Father Prumer's work and then uh, eventually maybe touching a bit into St. Alphonsus's two great volumes that at least have been translated by Mr. Grant. And so, yeah, a lot of big things ahead, but uh, I think I've just been kind of transitioning the show to that level because I'm wanting Catholics to like actually go back to these great sources of Catholic truth and really understand them so that, you know, as they're going out, they can avoid two great errors, like the great error of, you know, X, Y, or Z priest maybe saying some questionable stuff or X, Y, and Z layman who on the other end of it, right, can exude that neo-Jansenistic spirit and just thinks, well, you know, this isn't, you know, defeated, therefore I can just do what I want with it, you know and just toss out the whole uh, theological notes tradition. And so that's kind of my heart and desire. And uh, yeah, if that makes sense, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll, I'll enjoy it. 
Fantastic. Sounds like a pretty righteous uh, racehorse Simone you have going on there. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. indeed. <laughs> Recover the, uh, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Fowler, Fowler is the only one here who has an MA and he has a theolo theological training. Uh, Trad Thomas is getting his theological training. Paleocrat may be getting yeah. seminary training soon. Yeah. Uh, as far as Flanders, I just have an unfinished grad program uh, from the Catholic University of Ukraine, which is not going to be restarted anytime soon but shout out to uh richard de clue is in the chat he's he he says that uh a la coke a la coke ali coke like coca-cola ali coke is the way apparently that it's pronounced thank you to clue uh and shout out to your new parish which is dedicated under her patronage and so last thing before we get into our topic uh at 11 a.m eastern time we have a very special guest on meaning of catholic what dr scott hahn is gonna be what? talking about his new book holy is his name so i'm very excited this this greatly esteemed guest uh really excited because the the fellowship of saint anthony is going to embark on a yearly bible reading plan this advent and uh his new books dr han's new book is is a fantastic treatment of this topic of holiness in the holy scripture very apropos very important topic so guild members please submit your questions now and we'll have uh, get to as many of those at 11 a.m. Eastern time as possible. I'm Meaning of Catholic. As always, to become a Guild member, you can go to patreon.com slash Meaning of Catholic. If you can't afford it, you can always get free membership. Just contact me at meaningofcatholic.com slash contact. And uh, this week we'll have Guild content coming uh, in the form of, God willing, we've got the Feast of St. John Paul II on Saturday. So I'm hoping to start the Lefebvre John Paul II series um, on Saturday, God willing, um, as well as continuing the Imitation of Christ series. So with all that, let's get to the Internet promise. Um, first, let me let me say uh, autobiographically, um, essentially, I was converted to the faith via the Internet because I was Eastern Orthodox and uh, I had been convinced by the apologetics of Eastern Orthodoxy, which in my view, I think are the best, most challenging apologetics out there, which make the best case for anything non-Catholic. Uh, in, in my view, I do believe that the Roman Catholic cause obviously wins, but by a nose it, i think it's it's not something that's uh, sort of triumphalistic like as we as we are with the protestants i think the protestant case is just it's just a joke i mean unfortunate i mean unfortunate to say yeah, all yeah. due respect it's just sort of a joke once you get it <laughs> with all due respect, with all due respect. <laughs> all due respect it's a joke boys <laughs> i mean i'm talking yeah. the, the very yeah. basics of christianity yeah, yeah, they deny yeah. i mean the, the real presence of christ apostolic yeah. succession holy tradition i mean all these very very basic things are denied by Protestants. So once you get into just, you start reading the Apostolic Fathers, you start reading the Church Fathers, and you're just like, what? This is, there's just no basis for Protestantism. But there is a basis for Eastern Orthodoxy. Now, this is beyond the scope of the show. You can go re, uh, search Greek schisms. There's, there's all resources that we have on Meaning of Catholic, uh, uh, both written and video content on why I'm not Eastern Orthodox. But it was because of my contacts with Catholics on the internet then I met Catholics who actually were well-formed, well-educated, and they were able to meet the Eastern Orthodox apologetic. And so with all its evils, with all its uh, multifarious evils, the internet helped convert me. And that meaning of Catholic, I think, essentially is meaning of Catholic is trying to use the internet in the best way possible, trying to be a resource on the internet where Catholics or not even non-Catholics can get connected in ways that they just haven't been able to be connected in their local community and trying to, uh, you know, especially for people, you know, in, in other countries who are, don't even have a, maybe even have a Catholic church nearby, um, they can get connected with Catholics via the internet in a way that's profitable for them. So it's, it's trying to use this new technology in the best possible sense. But the problem is that the Internet has so many evils and we don't even need to talk about the evils of what I call evil images, which is pornography. That's really the mo most uh, conspicuous evil out there. Um, 
and uh you know this is obviously demonic and all these sorts of things but even mm -hmm. for people who are not struggling with that mortal sin i think that there are very common catholic sins and that that was that was the subject of our last show last week and uh cavazos did such a fantastic job bringing out the holy scripture on that and that um brought out something that uh we wrote at the very beginning of meaning of catholic uh, to try to um create an etiquette for the internet because th this is i think the, the problem with this new technology the technology happens faster than our etiquette or our cultural customs can even adapt to the new situation and so this is my attempt to uh create an etiquette of the internet for catholics um so what I want to do is just read through this and explain it a little bit. And then any of y'all have a reaction, thoughts, um, things that we need to add to this internet promise or things that we need to take away or um, what have you. So here's the internet promise of meaning of Catholic. So this is the contact that the conduct that I have attempted to always display. Um, and if, if I have ever not displayed this contact conduct, um, feel free to call me out on that because this is what I am attempting to promise that I will do on the internet. So number one, I will never speak a word on the internet that is not in accord with truth and charity. Truth in that every word will accord with the thing as it is, as far as I know, and charity in that it wills the good of my brother for the sake of God, as it is written. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall render an account for it on the day of judgment. Matthew 12, 36. I think this is, to me, this is the, the thing that most fills me with fear and trembling because as I speak right now on the internet, every idle word that I speak will be, I will give an account on the day of judgment. I think that this, the, the most difficult thing is that uh, the internet actually rewards me if, if I'm more sensational and I'm less charitable and less truthful. So there's actually an algorithm uh, set up, you know, I will get more likes if, if I'm more sensational, less charitable, less truthful. Um, it, it's just not really something that is very popular. Um, so that's the difficulty. That's the, the temptation. It's very tempting, I think, certainly to comment because one can comment anonymously, one can say things on the internet that uh, one would never say in person to, so to someone, for example, someone face to face. So it sort of creates the situation where we can, we can speak without any, uh, without any sort of fear of judgment, because when you speak face to face with a man, there is, there is at least a, a, a fear that that man would react against you, you know, or people nearby would react against you. But on the internet, there's this anonymity. Um, but I think that this this verse really uh, strikes me as, as very powerful and a, and a guiding principle of the internet. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall render an account for it on the day of judgment. So number two, I will always accept and welcome correction. As it is written, the way of life to him that observeth correction, but he that forsaketh reproofs goeth astray. Proverbs 10, 17. And this, I think, is critical, obviously, because number one is a high goal, and I will often fail in that goal. And I have to rely on my brethren to re reprove me. And I want to say thank you to uh, some of the members of Meaning of Catholic who have personally come to me and say, Hey, I, I think you were out of line in this, this or that case. And, and I've had to really examine that, take a look at that, see if I, if there's something better I can do in this or that case. Um, and this is, this is, I think this is such a critical, uh, um, uh, principle for, for the spiritual life. Like we, we just have to rely on the proofs of our brethren. I mean, particularly when you're married, it's your spouse who's reproving you. Thank God. Uh, you know, uh, this is one of the glories of matrimony is that you're you're married to somebody who knows you intimately better than anybody else alive on, on the earth. And they can reprove you and, and really correct you and help you and challenge you. Um, but uh, to this, I say, you know, again, publicly to anyone who's listening or watching, you know, if me personally, if I've gone astray, number one, 
I will I will take your criti criticism seriously, and I and I intend to do that. Um, so number three. So here's where we get into the more difficult, controversial areas. <laughs> number three. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I will never say a dishonorable word regarding any superior, whether ecclesiastical, natural, or political. Honor as witnessing the excellence of an office, as it is written, the prince of thy people thou shalt not curse. So this is the principle of honor, which is where we must honor the offices that are above us, ecclesiastical, natural, or political. So we should always be striving to address our superiors, according to their office, uh, holy, uh, holy father, his excellency, things like that. Not saying you, you know, you have to say that every single time you're referring to a person, but in general, your intention of your words are trying to stir up in your readers, a, an honor so that your readers will continue to honor someone. Uh, even if there's the difficulty that we face, uh, this, which I'll discuss in a moment. Um, but this also goes to one's own uh, equals or inferiors. There's also an honor that we have to show to one another to try to give each other the benefit of the doubt, um, to honor one another as human beings, as persons, as created in the image of God, as, as um, Cavazos quoted last week from St. James, that, that powerful verse where St. James says, uh, with the same mouth we we bless God and we also curse men who are made in his image. And this is like salt, salty. It's like brackish water that cannot be mixed. Um, so we have to love God and love our brother. He who, he who loveth not knoweth not God for God is charity or in another place. Uh, he who say he, he loves God, but hateth his brother is a liar. Uh, both from first John. Um, so number four, this is the principle of uh, this is where we get into the controversies that we have. Um, we ourselves, the four of us have, have discussed and disagreed about. Um, but number four says, if I am constrained by truth and charity to speak of evil among my superiors, I will do so only out of necessity. That is when the faith is endangered while maintaining due honor to the office, according to the scripture. First Timothy, an ancient man rebuke not, but entreat him as a father. And this, of course, is the principle of uh, showing due honor um, while maintaining a spirit of filial piety. And this is the difficulty of, in the situation that we're in, because uh, each one of the four of us, we have different, uh, our consciences bind us in different ways, according to this particular question. Uh, as we discussed a few weeks ago in the dubia of Vatican I, um, if you kind of fall on the more papal maximalist, you will err on the side of never speaking evil ever. Uh, perhaps in theory, there's a situation, but uh, it's erring on the side of not speaking evil to a superior, which is a, an instinct of piety, which is a very good Catholic instinct. And then on the other hand, the, the papal minimalist, of which I am, uh, would err on the side of defending the faith, uh, even to the point of speaking evil of a superior, which is it can only which can only be done if there's a, really a seriously a grave cause because there's a danger of scandal. Um, but if there's this grave cause, which St. Thomas brings out, uh, it, if and only if that's the case. But with the caveat that the honor should always be paid to the office, that we should never be trying to provoke our 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 equals or our inferiors to hatred of the office, because then that undermines the divine constitution of the church. It's, it's something that's the Neo Jansenist spirit that we all agree is, is poisonous, but I'm sure we'll have much to discuss in number four, but um, number five is I think the least controversial because it simply says, I will never say anything profane or vulgar as it is written Colossians three, eight, but now you, you also, put away anger, indignation, malice, blasphemy, filthy speech out of your mouth. Uh, but unfortunately, I think that there are, I, I guess, I, I I take a rather strict view of this. I don't, I, don't um, I think some Catholics kind of have a, a loose view of profanity or vulgarity, um, and they people just use it. I know well-known Catholics who do. Um, I don't know why. I, I feel like it's it's just completely unnecessary. 
Um, but there's also different cultural, you know, instances and things like that that come into play. But those are those are the the principles of the internet promise. So uh, who would like to? Who's got thoughts? I'm sure, you all have thoughts. Who would like to begin? Jake, man, you, but you 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 yeah. look sophisticated. <laughs> you look yeah, like yeah, you and yeah. you and Nicholas look like the least vulgar of us <laughs> all. Man. You guys are not lacking well, in definitely. sophistication or good taste, and you're I, definitely not refined. Guys, I no. used to be a cop. I've I might have said, <laughs> yeah, uh, may may have said one Pinky or two up, of man. those. Or, up, yeah, bro. so oh, there we go. Sorry, here we go. Okay, um, would you mind displaying the one through five once more, so I know which number I'm referring to here? Sure. Um, to number two. Excellent. So when you were there, uh, okay, I'm gonna put this down. I got it. You can, you can take that off of there. Or I'll, I'll leave it. Uh, that, for... that reminds me very much of, um, a concept that's not unique to St. Augustine, but I think he touches on it and don't ask me where, cause I couldn't tell you, but it, basically that all, uh, theologians, and I think he means all, including himself and especially himself, so that we do not go astray, should always have our work reviewed by another. And that's, for one, an act of humility to say, hey, I might be wrong about this, and I want to know. I'd like to be correct. I don't want to put myself in a, in a situation where I'm leading others astray. And, you know, again, humble me. Um, if I've made some some grievous error in interpreting the scripture or in theological reasoning or something like that. And so Augustine says, look, you, everybody needs somebody else to check their work. And so it made me think of, uh, you know, in our situation, we've got, we're always kind of bouncing ideas off of each other, whether t typically um, verbally or, or, or short written messages, something like that. And I think that that's uh, not to go against humility, but I think that's a feather in our cap. You know, I, I'm not aware of the behind the scenes of, of many other channels or apostolates, but I, I have to imagine that what we're doing is uh, somewhat abnormal. We're seeking for others to expose our faults, you know, and we're seeking to do that in a way that uh, encourages charity and conversion, right? So if I, if I make an error on such and such doctrine or dogma, and I think I'm correct and I'm defending it and I'm exposed to be mistaken, then the goal is, well, I need to amend my belief because heaven forbid I come against the truth, right? So that willingness to be corrected that you have, Tim, uh, and that the rest of us also aspire to, I think is probably... I won't say it's the most important, but it's the one that stands out to me as not normal amongst those who do what we do. Those are that's kind of my initial thought there. Yeah, for, for, uh, shout out to uh, the true Jesuit. Always good to see Father John Brown in the chat. He says number two is most probably the most important. Saint Ignatius says basically, if you only pray once a day, it should be an examination of conscience. Excellent. I think it's one of those things, too, that um, it makes it difficult, right, in modern times, because we can say, well, I want people to evaluate my work, but we're cranking out live shows. And so and a lot of the, a lot of the live shows are based on current events or things that are just simply, you know, happening now. So, yeah, current events where you're responding off the cuff. Right. And so you're, you're kind of on the fly, you know, flying by the seat of your pants and saying what you're saying. And it's coming out in the moment. And for some people, you know, I've done it. My my shows used to be like two and a half hours long. You know how many things you say in that time, right? And sometimes you're not putting a lot of thought into it. You're just simply just blah, just putting it out there in the universe. And then if you want people to correct it or want people to look at it and evaluate it, well, guess what? They're going to have to be listening to a show for two and a half hours. It, make, it makes it really tough. I think it's one of the beauties, in fact, of of writing and i'll only say this as an asterisk tim there's an enormous amount of literature in that folder right now for you to begin <laughs> dude i am rocking the daylights out of this bro i'm like the happiest guy in the universe right now so anyway right. but the book yes it's dude you can start man. it's good um but okay, anyway good. so um but i think that's one of those things where it's it's difficult and i want i want to say this and i will i because i was thinking it was part of me that wondered a little eatsy bits 
if if this topic had a little bit to do with the conversation online, I will not say who. And the reason why is because contrary to what certain individuals in my chat thought over at the Wolfpack chat on Telegram, they there were some folks that said this ain't going to end good. Right. A certain it was a situation. Somebody mentioned me in a way that was not very nice. And as the guy who defended the notion of counterpunching, um, I did that. But I think, you know, I knew a guy that did that. He got jumped from behind, right, in, in the Navy. Dude, he was at a bar, walking out, gets jumped from behind. Three dudes. Three dudes did this. They were all Coast Guard. He whooped their tail. He was drunk. He said he saw red. Last thing he knew, he saw red. They didn't know he was a bouncer at a biker bar in Minnesota before he was in the Navy. The guy just completely obliterated these dudes. By the time the police show up, there's three guys bloody and on the ground. And he's drunk out of his mind, blacked out, seeing red. And come to find out, he went overboard. He went too far. He got in trouble. And just imagine this in court for just a moment, <laughs> right? A guy beating up three dudes from the Coast Guard, right? Beating up three guys who jumped him from behind, right? He's on the ground. They're kicking him and everything. And he goes too far. And I only say that story um, not to poke fun at the Coast Guard. But to say that that I think I did that. I think that I went I went too far. It's one thing to have somebody say something that is not kind. It's another thing to then just say, well, you know, you slung some potato salad at me from across the lunchroom. I'm going to take the entire the entire huge bowl and go and smother it in your face and then laugh at you as I got you on the ground. That is essentially what I did. And it obviously did not, it, it incurred a little bit of wrath. Right? There was a back and forth and a back and forth and a back and forth. And this is a prominent guy. This is somebody much, much bigger than me. And it was not going good. And then I went back later. There was no, no more comments. And I thought, well, that's weird. So I'm back and looked. And this individual had edited out that part in the update and put a correction on there. It was an apology. And said that what he did was inappropriate and that he should not have done that to this person. And he deleted the, inter the exchange, thankfully, between the two of us. And then we talked in the email, in a DM. And went back and forth in a DM. And it was the kind of thing where, you know, we both know, we both agreed, we have huge differences. Massive. Like, this is not even a question. But there's a better way. And that what happened was not something that that shined forth in any way that was charitable, that it willed the good of my brother for the sake of God at all. It was simply, I want to tear you down. I don't like what you believe. I think what you believe is cuckoo bird nonsense, poo poo trash. Right. And going at each other that way. And it was cool because. I didn't even need to stand corrected. I just was, you know, it, it was no, Hey, you shouldn't have done this. It was, it was recognizing it in himself and me seeing that he recognized it in himself for me to recognize it in my own. And so I thought that was a cool thing. And he's the kind of guy, look, I, if I, he knows who he is. If, if I ever see him, uh, we have a mutual, mutual friend that if, if I ever see him, Beer's on me, right? Beer's on me. And so it's one of those things. And I hope that we can talk again, maybe even debate, right? I'd be willing to do that. <laughs> and, and Jake knows I'm not even a debate guy. No, I would, no, I not. would do it. I would do it. But I, Just, I think that's a, it was a powerful experience that happened yeah. since deciding to do this show in this way on this topic. And I wanted to just say that. Can you clarify something real quick? Yeah. Is that beer's on you because he'll deck you and you'll he'll, spill it he'll chuck it at me he'll chuck yeah. it and i'll and I'll, I'll take it man well no i mean <laughs> it was it was a good tit for tat you know it but and we both were we both looked bad there's no there's no way the people who walked in there and saw this thing would say oh those two guys are are definitely doing great right i think mine was more clever <laughs> maybe maybe better written but the truth is, but it doesn't matter the point is like wow you you can write garbage very beautifully right <laughs> you can you can do that um and so that was yeah it's one of those things but yeah i i i'm glad that it worked out that way 
And we, in fact, we disagree, interestingly enough, over issues three and four. That's that was that's our main issue is that we have major disagreements over superiors, uh, ecclesiastical or otherwise, and how we speak of them, how we ought to deal with that. You said the uh, the, the papal uh, maximalist and minimalist positions and stuff like that. We're on, that's exactly what this was over, and it resulted in in that. And so I'm I'm just grateful <clears throat> that God was merciful enough to allow both of us to see it in that way. And, and I wanted to say it rather than to just let it go over in silence. I didn't want to just say, well, I'm, that's good. It's gone by. I wanted to, to say my part and to say what I did, even counter punching. I, I may have, may have obliterated it, right? but it did, but I went too far and there would be a reasonable judgment to say, Jeremiah, that was inappropriate. Big time. Uh, I just want to say, I mean, this is um, it reminds me of this this great article over over at Catholic Culture, Jeff Miras and uh, Jeff Miras, mainstream, great intellectual. He has a, a series of articles called Should We Criticize Pope Francis or Not? If so, how? And uh, he takes a very balanced approach here. But one of the things he says in this is that if you ever have a public news media, anybody who apologizes for doing something overboard as Jeremiah just did, that is someone you can trust. And I just want to thank, uh, you know, <clears throat> me and the Catholic, <clears throat> excuse me, me and the Catholic viewers may not agree with what Ban Bannister may say. I don't agree with everything Bannister says. He doesn't agree with everything I say, uh, but he is someone that you can trust. Bannister is someone you can trust because only someone because look at that mustache. Yeah, exactly. I mean, How could yeah, you not I trust this mustache? mustache. Anyway. Uh, but just uh, <laughs> it's just being willing to apologize for something mm -hmm. that you I mean, this is this is uh, I'm just thankful to have Bannister as a friend and to have him part of this channel and all y'all. This is this is this is what makes my work great a great joy is to is to be with this community of people so Cavazos, what are your what are your what are your points what, what are your thoughts yeah so I, i'm just gonna give you my brief highlight opinion on all, actually all five of them believe it or not because i i can uh give just a summary but i really so one and two points one and two this first one on speech and then this other one on uh receiving correction i think it's very wise because Humility is that starting point in the spiritual life. And I think that's something that we all have to remember. And I especially think of this because whenever I look at, for instance, number one, uh, in the context of the internet, let's be honest, it is so easy to make um, a theology so or a philosophy show or even writing um, with the intention of kind of just obliterating an opponent's position as opposed to... Um, seeking out truth and charity and i think that again when you're seeking out truth and charity doesn't mean that it's going to be you know all sunshine and rainbows 24 7 but i think just remembering inside of your conscience that like you're seeking after your brother's good even a brother that you disagree with or even if say they're you know the unsaved world right the world of the pagans that are out there who aren't catholic um re remembering to have that charity for them as opposed to, I just want to win this type of argument, I think is important. Um, the second thing on number two, um, on point number two, I think is very wise because we have to remember that the, with humility, the, the spiritual life is one in which we do need to do what St. Paul says, right, in um, Philippians 2.15, work, our, our, work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Or as 1 Peter 1, I think it's 17 says, for the rest of your earthly life, remain on this earth in the fear of God, right? We have to remember that um, the saints are essentially unanimous of the fact that there are very few of even the elect who are saved, right? There are very few people inside of the church that are saved. And maybe this could be a point of the discussion or debate, but I think that we have to remember this real reality of when we're using our words or when we examine our consciences, what are we doing these things for? Are we doing this for the glory of God truly or for our glory? I always I always reference this sometimes on my show, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of the old, like the old original Indiana Jones films. 
And inside of the third film, uh, Last Crusade, there's that scene where, you know, Indiana Jones is seeking after the uh, the chalice of our Lord, which would be super cool if someone could find that. So some one of you guys, one of you viewers should get on it or something. Yeah, we got to get on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's this really cool scene where, you know, there's this, I guess, kind of like Italian mob or something that's kind of going after him to protect the grill. But there's this powerful line where this person basically asks Dr. Jones, are you doing this? for Christ's glory or for your own. And that's something I think we can just take, even though maybe it comes from a, a cheesy movie analogy, but take to ourselves and say, even in the stuff that we're doing that's maybe not overtly theological, like doing what we're doing right now, are we doing the thing that we're doing for Christ's glory? Are we kind of trying to imitate that almost quasi-religious um, you know, religious life spirit, if you will, of trying to do everything, even if it's just, you know, sweeping or taking out the trash or what have you for the glory of God. And this goes back to what St. Paul says, right? Whatsoever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all for the glory of God. I think with points number two and three, it's very good to always, with especially number three, to remember this idea of humility and recognize that God is a God who loves hierarchy, right? I mean, we look at it uh, from St. Thomas' Summa. He, he beautifully illustrates the reality of, of God, angels, men, animals, and plants, right? That God is above everything and then rational creatures and then irrational creatures, if you will. And this reality, I think, is important to recognize that we are under a covering for the specific reason that we do fall into pride, right? All sin is rooted in pride, and so we need to make sure that we are giving honor to our superiors. It's interesting, though, when I look at how this maybe practically plays out in number four, I'm recognizing, you know, a lot of viewers might look, right, and they might immediately think of, um, the Holy Father is kind of the image that kind of comes up in their mind whenever they're thinking about these disagreements, which is interesting to me because I actually, whenever I first read this, Tim, I actually thought of my local pastor first, my local priests, and then my local bishop, right? That's how I kind of viewed it as opposed to first looking at the pontiff. Um, and I think the reason is, is because while I believe we should be submissive to the Roman pontiff in all things lawful, I do think that um, we sometimes... Um, neglect this reality of just even listening to maybe what Father says, right, in our local parish context, and then also uh, what the local bishop has to say. Um, but specifically with number four, and this will be my last point, kind of ending with number five, um, I do think that we do have to recognize uh, that if we are practicing humility, if we are striving after the spiritual life, then there will be times in which we will have to say something, right, if something ill is going on. I'll give this quick story as an analogy. Uh, and then I'll be done. But I remember one time getting, uh, finding out that a friend of mine who, um, I won't say who they are or anything like that, but uh, this personal friend of mine was struggling with sins against the sixth and ninth commandments, right? Sins against the virtue of purity. And he told me, uh, you know, this story of a, a local priest uh, in his particular part of the world who, um, essentially was asserting that, you know, this individual who struggled with viewing impure images and with the solitary sin, that, you know, he shouldn't really worry about it. You know, if his conscience didn't really convict him that it was evil, then it really wasn't that evil. You know, it was one of these kind of horror stories that maybe you can think of, like maybe a priest from the 70s or 80s saying. And he was just bewildered. He was just like, how is this not evil? And so I ended up having a conversation with this priest. And, you know, I, I basically talk about uh, you know, paucity of matter, right? Shout out to Tim Flanders for teaching us that when it came to, uh, you know, sins against the sixth and ninth commandment, taking this from St. Alphonsus, um, but basically talking to him with about it. And I remember him basically finishing the conversation of saying, you know, St. Alphonsus's view is, a, is an okay view, but, you know, if you want, I think you should go and investigate maybe this more modern view. So he gives me an author, right, to go look up. The next day I look up this author and it's a modern day Protestant psychologist, right, kind of giving his opinion on moral mm -hmm. theology. And I just and I just remember walking away from that conversation saying, you know, did that happen? You know, like, <laughs> did that did that happen? What the heck? You know, it's crazy that um, and I'm, again, I'm not trying to blow my own horn, but like the fact that, you know, I as a convert was bringing Aquinas and Thomas talking about the real grave reality of sins against the sixth and ninth commandment. And then 
he's giving me like a modern day Protestant psychologist. You know, it's not even a Puritan, right? It's it's, it's a modern day. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so lame. And so I was just like, oh, but this how this is how I think we need to behave with my last point with number five, which is speech is important. Right. Speak it, like the scripture says, I believe it's in Proverbs that, you know, life is contained in the tongue right? you can speak, uh, you know, uh, life or death. And that's not, you know, in some new age way of, you know, I will proclaim this and then this will happen. But in the sense that our speech does affect um, the world around us in the sense of how we treat one another. And so I think that we need to be careful with our speech but also recognize that in that being careful with our speech, we also sometimes do need to call out, even sometimes those who are above us. And I'm just thinking of practically right now in the context of, of the priesthood. So those are kind of some of my thoughts, but I, I think it's all very, um, very good and wise. And I actually fully agree with you, Tim. I'm definitely a, uh, I interpret that passage from Colossians very strictly. And so my father, thankfully, uh, God, God bless him. He, uh, he told me a long time ago, he said, Nicholas, if you curse, you just have a bad vocabulary. And I was like nine or 10 when he, he told me this, and that just stuck with me. And so it's just never been uh, a problem in, for me. Um, I'm not trying to pass judgment and say I'm better or anything like that. I think there might be some room for debate, but I do take it pretty strictly myself. And so those are some of my general thoughts, if that makes sense. Nicholas, you're always a, a, a great scholastic. Always got fantastic points to to present thank you uh nicholas uh paleo you want to give us a, a final word on this and we'll sign off mm. Any final thoughts? just just that i love this show i love the guys on the show i love this apostolate and it bummed me out actually and this is it, it ties into this because it plays into the last episode and that is you know we had these comments and stuff and and sometimes people don't like the beginnings, you know, they're like, oh, the show doesn't start until 15 minutes. <laughs> it's a it's a Monday morning talk show to start your week, man. It's like a driving show, you know. Um, and so I, I just want to encourage people, you know, support it. If you love this, support it. If you and, and if you see these guys and you, you, the people you look at on the screen, you say, you know, I don't just like the content where they're they're coming out and they're saying informative things. Right. You're not we're not just spewing out information but we're real people and that we recognize in other people that that quality that um even going back to the conversation i had that you know i i felt that he'd come after me because of maybe a person who i am on a screen when i'm acting a little bit wild and zany with some kanye glasses on or something and that that's what i am all the time um that's just not true and i like that that tim begins these shows like this to say what are you guys doing this week? Hey, you know, how's your school going? Things that that show the people who are viewing that we aren't cartoons or, you know, any kind of weird carbon copies of anything, but we're people with regular lives and that we're trying to to just love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves and to do what we must in order to to live right, to be a good example to everyone around us, to be faithful sons of the church and to make our way ultimately to heaven. And so I encourage you to, to go to the website. I encourage you to go to the Patreon, especially that right now. Go to the Patreon and support it. And so, but beyond that, beyond that, no, I loved it, man. <laughs> and, and it's a great, it's a great promise. And people, people may not know this, you know, Tim, when he started this, one of the things that really stood out to me as somebody being critical of the way that individuals use the internet and as somebody who is a media theorist, a media ecologist, that's what I went to school for that journalism um but was was his idea even of going on social media and praying and i don't i'm not going to put him on the spot and ask if he still does that but i think that it's a good idea to say when you go on you know you're going into dangerous territory you're going somewhere that is going to play on things about you that is not always playing on the best part the better part right it's like the little devil on your shoulder right and you <laughs> jiminy cricket the little guardian angel is not the one that the algorithm loves. And so so it prioritizes one and it's always kind of leaning the head in that direction. And so simply to know that, to know those things, to keep this promise in mind. And if you like this kind of promise, make it your own. And if you've got things to add, send us an email, you know, and and tell us what you think. But but to to take that and to recognize that and to say this is part of life. And there's a way to balance this thing out, to use it properly, because there are powerful testimonies like Tim's and like mine. I came to the faith much the same way. 
debating online. It was in blogs, going against Catholics, calling them idolaters. That <laughs> after a year and some, found myself well, you know, going to the church. And so, to find yourself there and to say, I want to do it right. I want to do it the right way, with the right heart, the right, the right attitude, the right words, the right mental framework. And and so, I hope that you join us in that. Absolutely. Thank thanks, Jeremiah. And um, so, yeah, you can join the guild to help us financially. Um, you, as I said, you can also get free access if you if you can't afford it. Also, I want to appeal to anybody who wants to join the apostolate to be a member of the apostolate, whether to volunteer or to have any kind of contractual relationship with us. We're having our uh, law. We're spreading our our wings. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're hoping to. Uh, formulate the long-term vision of the apostolate um we're having all the the members of the apostolate there's about 20 people who are members contributing their time energy to this work uh for the long term and we're all going to get together in a couple weeks to take the next steps our, our new website is coming out soon hopefully this fall um and that'll have more uh content in a better way but if you want to join us whether that's uh, volunteer or any type of free membership, or uh, if you'd like to join us to help us with this whole vision. Um, I mean, right now it's, it's people who all four of us have our own sort of channels apart from this in a sense, in some way or another. Um, and then we contribute at meaning of Catholic as this open forum, trying to be the meaning of Catholic together. Um, but uh, as I said earlier, we also have our ladies group um, who do, they do a lot of great, work and contributions to us and we have other volunteers who help out in either, uh, other ways so if you'd like to join us and contribute in any way to this this vision you can go to meaningofcatholic.com slash contact so let's pray our hail mary and invoke our patrons before we do can i just say one oh, more thing yeah sure we need we need to get nicholas on that thumbnail man that guy for one it's going to bring in more people i mean he's the youngest guy of the group you know, mm -hmm. he's all sorts of charming mm -hmm. look. I mean, look at his look at his cheeks right now, man. So I mean, you you got to have him on there. We're gonna we're gonna get more people. <laughs> so we got we got to figure out a way to do it, man. Because he's he's it's been awesome to have you on, Nicholas. It's it really has been a joy, dude. And it's as I said, this is like the greatest way to start the week. I think is with you guys. I love it. And I and Tim and everybody can tell you I did not love it at first. <laughs> Waking up, it's been better, guys. With the six o'clock begin time. But the truth is, you've added nothing but joy, I think, to this and wisdom and knowledge and just humility to it. And so I'm really I'm really grateful. And we got to get your mug on that on that thumbnail. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. get definitely get. Uh, right. So, Nicholas, have you sent me sent me a send me a high quality headshot? We'll, we'll get we'll have Mrs. Flanders make something beautiful, as she always does. Everything that's beautiful on this whole show. And the apostolate comes from Mrs. Flanders. It's so yeah. thank you to my lovely wife. Let's let's pray a Hail Mary and offer it all up. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Victory. Pray for, pray us. for us. Mary, Queen of the Home. Pray for, pray for us. St. Joseph, terror of demons. Pray for pray us. St. Anthony of the desert, pray for all clergy and seminarians. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus is King. Amen.